Hello there, my name is Patrick Weir, and this is Weird Science. Now today, I'm gonna be teaching you how to recreate Flubber from the hit Disney film, Flubber. <laughs> how fun is that gonna be? I'll tell you, I'm pretty okay, pretty moderate. It's nothing great, we're not making any volcanoes here, don't get your fucking hopes up. Wow, where did that come from? I don't know, let's move on. So the first and most important step, just like in any other science experiment, is safety. That's why we brought along our best safety goggles, right kids? So you're gonna wanna go ahead and throw these bad boys on before proceeding any further into the experiment. Jesus Christ. Mom! What kind of bullshit goggles did you get me? Are these fucking swimmers goggles? I can't see jack shit. How am I supposed to make my own fucking flubber? Oh, you dumb bitch. All right, well, in the case that you're a stupid slut of a mother, buys you the wrong kind of goggles that prevent you from being able to see, uh, then, then you don't have to wear them, but otherwise you should wear them. Wear yours. Unless my mom bought your goggles, then they probably don't fucking work! Now that we've got our safety goggles on, we're ready to rock and roll. And learn. So the second step in creating your own flubber, you're gonna wanna build the body. Start to give it shape right off the bat. What I'm using here today is some aloe vera, just to give it that color and that consistency uh, that we all know and love from flubber. Here we go, that's a good amount. Uh, hair gel also works. Just really anything that has that sort of thick, um, gooey, but still kind of liquidy consistency. That will be best for creating your own flubber. Although I like the aloe vera, frankly, just because it smells so darn good. <laughs> all right, so once we got all of our aloe put together, we're gonna wanna move on to the next step. And this step still focuses on, you know, the consistency of your flubber, just because you wanna make sure, you know, that he's not too runny and that he's just sort of slopping all over the place whenever he's jumping around and being a goof. So you're gonna wanna crack an egg in here as well. Uh, the egg, just like in baking, is in here to keep everything together. So now we got this sort of yellowy blue goop. It's starting to look like a flubber, isn't it? Next up, I know this is going to sound crazy, but hear me out. You're gonna wanna go ahead and add a cup of water as well. We've been focusing on keeping him thick, but you don't want him to be too thick. You wanna, you wanna have a little bit of, you know, sort of flowiness in your flubber. You don't want your flubber to be a thought. <laughs> <laughs> right? The kids, the kids will get it. So next up, of course, you're gonna wanna throw in the box of a moldy leftover spaghetti. <coughs> uh, mix that up really nice. Uh, okay, after you got the moldy leftover spaghetti mixed in, you're gonna wanna take a fully digested rotisserie chicken from the intestines of a John Goodman and just mix that in here as well. So now, this is starting to look like flubber, right? Whew! That's a potent odor. All right, so the last thing you wanna throw in your goop uh, before you put it in the oven at 575 and bake it for 24 hours is salt, uh, to taste. So, let's see. Where did I put the fucking salt? Well, it's a good thing I lost it now with all these goddamn sirens. You, you can't make videos in Los Angeles with all the sirens. They're just like bang, 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 nonstop. Fuck, 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 what was that? What? Oh, shit. Ah! Oh, fuck. I don't feel good. Whew. Mom, chocolate milk. Pronto. Mom! Okay, what happened? I was making my flubber, and then there was a bright light. Oh my god. Los Angeles has been nuked. What a twist! Unfortunately, Flubber's gonna have to wait. Instead, I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial on surviving all of this nuclear fallout that resides right outside of our doorsteps. But I'm going to need you to listen to me. Very, 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 very good. Uh, good, good Lee. Oh, hey. Found the salt. Crazy how things like that work, huh? As soon as that bomb strikes, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are in a safe and secure area. Safety. First and foremost. Hey, just like the flubber experiment. On the floor, I should clean that up. That's disgusting. No! Cleanliness doesn't matter in nuclear fallout. The only thing that matters is survival. And safety. 
you know, and a good sense of humor because laughter really is the best medicine. You're gonna wanna make sure that whatever shelter you find, it is secured and tightly locked down. You're gonna wanna make sure to lock all windows, lock all your doors. You don't want any radioactive particles creeping their way in, getting all radioactive, not up in the air! Because in nuclear fallout, the only thing that matters is making sure radioactive particles don't get into your house. And survival, and safety, and then I will stand by having a good sense of humor because laughter, man, no joke really is the best medicine. <laughs> See, I feel better about this whole situation already. Can't take our freedom if they can't take our laughter. <laughs> take that, you fucking commie bastards. You're gonna wanna make sure to wash off any radioactive particles that may have somehow made their way onto your body. Just like you had to lock down and secure these premises, you also gotta lock down and secure these premises. Your body. From your head to your dick to your toes to your dick to your head to your butt hole. Pop quiz! How do you properly wash away radioactive dust off your body? Huh? Shampoo? Bingo, what else? Conditioner. Uh. Hold right there, you fucking moron. That's a big no-no. Oh no, that's right. Conditioner with tea tree oil so it makes my head all tingly, duh. Oh, your hair is gonna be tingly all right, but not from the tea tree oil. I guess also from the tea tree oil, but what I'm talking about is the conditioner trapping radioactive particles in your hair strands and having them spread through your body, destroying your cells at a cellular level and tearing apart your DNA. Is that the kind of tingles you want to feel, huh? Wow, thank you, mister. Anytime, kiddo. So now we know that conditioner is essentially a death trap in the post-nuclear world. What's the opposite of a death trap? Eternal life. And what's the opposite of conditioner? Shampoo, exactly! Now you're getting it! So with all of that knowledge and the fact that I am a, obviously a scientist of some sort, we can concur that shampoo is the best first line of defense against radiation. We've all seen, you know, this method applied in those instructional videos we always used to have to watch in science class, you know, back in high school about uh, how to properly protect yourself from global warming. We've all seen that video. If you, ha you could click there to see that video, but we've all seen it from science class. But if you did it for some reason, you can click there to watch it. Go watch it. So we can take that method and apply it to this. Uh, the only difference is a sh shampoo instead of sunscreen. Remember, the thicker the coat, the more uh, you'll float. I don't know. I don't have a good rhyme for this. All I do have is good protection against uh, nuclear fallout. This feels oddly familiar. <laughs> Just like that video from science class, am I right? Ugh, this is salty. It smells like coconuts, but it tastes like salt. Just like my dick. While shampoo is a great first line of defense, this is nuclear fallout we're talking about. After all, you wouldn't wear just one condom, would you? Now, ideally, you would throw on one of those yellow hazmat suits you always see in the movies, but chances are you don't have one of those laying around. But no need to fret. Daddy Patty's got you covered. A simple poncho with your safety goggles will, uh, will do just fine. How the fuck do you... Let the hate flow through you. Now isn't this safe? Now to finish it all off, you're gonna wanna seal this all tight with some cellophane. And I know you're thinking that this seems redundant, but whenever it comes to radiation, there's no such thing as too safe. I feel safe now. Let's see radiation get through this, huh? <sighs> okay, I I know what you're thinking. All of all of this seems ridiculous. I mean, here I am, lucky enough to start off in a still fully functional house. There's a very good chance, you know, the majority of you are getting stuck outside whenever the bomb whenever the bomb goes off. But don't worry, I got some good tips for you people too. As we've seen in the documentary, Indiana Jones 4, any fridge will protect you from a nuclear blast. Just run into your nearest Home Depot, pick whatever fridge fancies you, and go to town. Just like a studio apartment, am I right? All right, well, I'm gonna go uh, take a shower. Bye. So we survived the blast, we got ourselves some shelter, and we're still fashionable. But how do we flourish in the apocalyptic wasteland? Well, as we've seen in the official U.S. government fallout simulations, fallout 
Bottle caps will most likely be the currency of the apocalyptic future. You know what they say, bottle caps make the world go round, baby. b b b, -b bonus tip! Hi there, welcome to nuclear economics. So, like I said, it's safe to assume that the currency of the wasteland is bottle caps as we've seen from the government simulation fallout. Now I'm going to show you a quick, uh, a quick few hot spots to teach you how to get rich quick. I oh, got Close one. Those raiders almost found us. Old neighborhood dumpsters like the one you see before you are a great hot spot for finding bottle caps. Shoot. Got a couple right here. Get a close up on that. Oh, hello, rich people. Yeah, I'd love to join the club. All right, let's get out of here. It's a wasteland out here. Before the bomb dropped. Everything you see before you used to be green and vibrant. Look at all these poor people running for their lives. This baby's worth a pretty penny. Back before the bomb, this used to be a bustling city. Huh. Now look around, there's nobody here. Gold mine. What up? Welcome to my crib. So as you can see, I've crafted a lovely shelter for myself. Very spacious, very cozy. But the number one thing you're gonna wanna remember when uh, creating shelter for the nuclear wasteland is uh, you wanna keep it hidden. You wanna keep it uh, you know, in an undisclosed location. Make it impossible to find. You don't wanna wake up in the middle of the night. Uh, the Raiders. Patrick? Patrick? Patrick, are you in the box? No. Patrick! There is no Patrick here. Leave now or or face the consequences. What the fuck are you doing? Patrick, what, what? the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you at work? It's there's no work in nuclear winter. Patrick! It is sunny and 80 degrees. There is no nuclear warfare. We have to pay rent. How the fuck are we supposed to pay rent, Patrick? I have bottle caps. Fuck your bottle cap! God damn it, Patrick! Get up, get no. out of the box, and go to fucking work. It's, it's Patrick. Go to work. Come on! What the fuck are you doing? Go to work. Patrick? Patrick, are you in the fridge? No. Patrick, I can see you. <sighs> Patrick! What the fuck? I told you to go to work. No, uh, that's, that's not work. No, it's not. Uh, what?